Okay, hello everybody, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, as you can see, I am in the process of uh, drawing a revamped version of uh, Kamala Khan, the, uh, the lesser Ms. Marvel, and I'm trying to uh, make her look more better than her usual dopey self. Um, here I have sort of aged her up about five years, so she no longer looks like a dorky 12-year-old. Well, she's not 12 years in the comic. She's about 18. So here she's about 23. But they still draw her like she's 12, and they draw her with these giant, goofy fists. So I wanted to make her look cooler. And in doing so, I've uh, put her in the original Ms. Marvel's costume. 
and I'm sort of mimicking a classic pose of the original Ms. Marvel when she first got this costume back in, I think it was 1979. It's been a while. Hold on. This is what it looked like originally back in the day, drawn by Dave Cockrum. So I'm just mimicking this pose and this costume, but with the uh, current Ms. Marvel. So I've got her mostly penciled in, and uh, I'm going to finish working on some of the shadows, and I'm going to start inking her, and hopefully, eh, it, actually it probably won't be done today, but uh, I'll get I'll get a good portion of it finished. So that's that's the plan. So we'll see what happens. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it, or at least enjoy watching me fumble around trying to do it. So, <laughs> um, But anyway, thanks again for joining me. I appreciate it. Hope you guys are doing well. It is Tuesday, and uh, you know the weekend will be here soon enough. Uh-oh. Hold on one second. Something's going on. Of course, something's always going on with my live streams, but uh, I'm trying to just get again to YouTube on my cell phone and hopefully it will show up also fair warning i've been having troubles with uh, some of the connections on my internet so if the stream goes down for some reason let me know um i'm i probably won't notice it immediately so if something does happen speak up in the chat and give me a heads up because my back is to the computer so i won't necessarily see if something does not go awesome. So, um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> P Money is uh, is telling my wife that he loves her. I'm sure she appreciates that. Um, <laughs> and yes, it's hot here as well, P Money. It's very, I had to turn the air conditioner on because I have all these lights on while I'm drawing and it's like, is literally making me sweat so i'm hoping that it'll cool down fairly shortly in here and uh you know i won't pass out um let's see bop, 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 bop. Mm. oh <laughs> he might says oh thank goodness you aged her i did not want to find a teenage ms marvel hot yeah the teenage ms marvel is not hot she is uh she's pretty lame and I don't know why they've given her such a, a lame look, um, but they did. So, um, Pima says, "Well, it's not too hot today. We're oh, you getting yeah? Pima is in Canada, so it's very, very smoke filled up and up up north. So, so hopefully P Money is uh, staying inside where it's safe and uh, you know wearing the proper uh, firefighting gear so he can you know breathe properly. But let me." I know I'm forgetting something. I got my pens. That's good. Got my pencils. I, wait, I got a pencil. I don't have, I'm missing one pencil. One that I need, of course. Um, where is it? Let me, oh, there it is, found it. Okay, got the pencils, check. Let's see, got the erasers, check. All right, I'm good. Now, got my water, check. Got my art, check. Got my reference, check. All right. I guess I can, just, I can get started. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll be here for a while. So we'll see how it goes. Ooh, let me raise my chair up. There we go. Ah, now I can actually reach my artwork. Now, the problem I have now is trying to figure out where to put the shadows on here, but I don't know. I'm going to try to use this, the, uh, the original drawing as a guide, but probably not too much because it's kind of, you kind of just blackened everything in. I'm going to try to try to make it look a little, a little better. I don't know. We'll see. Oh. Actually, let me just the lighting so I can see. All right, there we go.
Um, let's see. Amy Lester says she has a lame power too, Mr. Fantastic power, but his powers are second to his genius. She has a second power. She can appear. Oh, P. Money says she has a second power. She can appear like Mary Jane and die instead of her. Apparently, I don't know what that means. <laughs> You'll have to elaborate, P. Money. Um, poor girl is what are her powers second to? She has a power to be, oh, an annoying teenager. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that does seem like a secondary power. Well, here she's using, oops, hold on. Sorry. There we go. Here she's using her power for good because she has embiggened all the best parts of her body. So instead of just making giant fists, she's made giant other parts of her body. <laughs> That's the joke. This is sort of a a humorous drawing. The power of teen drama, yes. Hey, Eagle 43 is here. How you doing? Good seeing you. Hope you're doing awesome, Eagle 43. Don't, you don't know the comics killed Ms. Marvel? No, I did. I know she. I know they killed her off, but I, I didn't. I don't know the circumstance. I didn't really care. I was just glad they did it <laughs> because Kamala Khan is like the worst character they uh, Marvel Comics has created, and probably it's been yeah, probably in the last thirty years, Kamala Khan is, is the worst character Marvel Comics has has come up with. At one point, I would have said Squirrel Girl, but Kamala Khan has easily beaten her as the most annoying and unlikable character Marvel Comics has created. So I figured, why not make her more likable? Well, make, why, don't, why not make her more appealing to actual comic book uh, buyers so that people would actually want to read her books instead of having her books be canceled every five, every five minutes because no one buys them? Wouldn't that be nice? So I'm doing my part to try to make Kamala Khan's Ms. Marvel more appealing to the general masses. More interesting. Squirrel Girl has a cute squirrel sidekick named Tippy Toes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, didn't, didn't really make her that appealing <laughs> tippy toes <laughs> she had a, she had a few she had a few squirrel sidekicks and they were all kind of silly although squirrel girl was created by uh steve didco the guy who created spider-man so i can't knock her too much but still she's not a she's not a great character and then her uh the little uh the little trope they gave her where she, where she was unbeatable and no one could defeat her including galactus was uh it got it got a little annoying after a while but even still kamala khan has beat her in the annoying obnoxious character contest Hmm. Now, I know a lot of artists use just whenever they want to blacken in something, they just sort of exit out. I I can't. Well, I I can do. I guess I could do that, but I have to actually kind of blacken it out physically in order for me to get a good visual picture of what it's going to look like. I, I can't just mentally visualize it and have it be accurate. <laughs> I probably I probably screwed up more than I already would. Let me think. Hmm. She first showed up in an old Iron Man comic, I think it was. No, she showed up. She first showed up in um, 
it was Marvel Superheroes number 10, I think. I have it. I didn't even realize that I had her first appearance. Appearance. Uh, a friend of mine had given me a bunch of his old comic books. This is years ago, probably a decade ago. And there was a series called Marvel Superheroes back in the early 1990s that no one bought, no one paid attention to. It, it was just basically just uh, um, an anthology of old stories that Marvel never printed. And they tossed in this this uh, Steve Ditko story starring a character named uh, Squirrel Girl. And I think Iron Man was in it. Um, and I found out years after I got these comics that Squirrel Girl's first appearance was in this random comic book. And I, and I, and I looked in those, I looked in all those comic books that my friend had given me and it was there. I was like, oh, cool. Because <laughs> I would never have bought that comic if, if he hadn't given it to me. If I saw it on the stands, I would have just left it there. It was just a no-name comic. Yeah, Iron Man and Doctor Doom were, were in that story, I believe. Um, but it was the the the, co the comic book itself was called uh, Marvel Superheroes. I think it was from 1992, maybe 1991. Again, my I'd have to look. Hold on, I'll look right now. <laughs> yeah, rat, rat. That. Yep, here it is. This is it. And it's uh, 1991, the winter issue of uh, Marvel Superheroes. Winter special with X Men, Namor, Iron Man, blah, blah, blah. So. Get back in there. Ow! Drop my water bottle, bottle on my toe. Yeah, it's an Eric Larson cover, uh, Eric Hawkins. P. Money says, first Ms. Marvel, then Squirrel Girl. Okay, let's move on to good Marvel superheroes. I finally saw the new Guardians movie. I thought it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. I thought it was the weakest out of all three of them. I did like the fact that they uh, they covered Rocket's origin story. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I like that. I, I did not like what they did with... Uh, with Adam Warlock, they basically just turned him into an idiot, like a like he was mentally handicapped <laughs> or severely autistic. That, you know, um, I didn't like that. But overall, I mean, on a scale of one to ten, I'd probably give it a probably give it a six. Hey, Head Ninjas here. How you doing? Good seeing you. How do you improve perfection? I don't know. I'm going to try. I know I know Kamala Khan is perfect. It's a perfect character, according to Marvel Comics. But I'm going to try to improve her by making her more perfect. Eric Hawkins is here. I look forward to getting Eric's uh, latest issue of The Zombie World of Oz. I'm sure it will be very cool, just like his other issues. Alpha Pro says that Guardians movie was a bummer. It made, my, it made me feel sad. Not a very feel-good movie at all. Adam Warlock was just born, so he was a baby. Yeah, but he's not supposed to be stupid. <laughs> you know, it's, um, yeah, obviously it's a comic book movie, but it's, uh, 
just being born, you know, in terms of Adam Warlock, did not mean that he was stupid. And even in the comics, when he was just born, he was already smarter than than, than anyone else. So, if nothing else, they should have at least made him not look like a adult idiot. <laughs> Yeah, baby in a man's body, but he, he's not. He's not a baby in a man's body. He's not. He's not like. Uh, or even Captain, even Shazam, should not be a boy in a man's body. They got that completely wrong in the movies, um, and it was unfortunate because it, it made the movies dumb. It made him look like an idiot as well. He's not supposed to be an idiot. So is a movie worth going to? Ask Eagle Forty Three. Is it worth going to? I would, mm, I I would not say yes. <laughs> I would say wait for it to show up on, uh, wait to stream it, you know, wait till it shows up on home video or DVD or Betamax or whatever. It's not, it's not worth running out and paying twelve bucks to see in the movie theater. I would say that. I would say save that money for Mission Impossible or something else. Save it for better movies than uh, Guardians 3. Um, didn't JLU make Shazam a boy in a man's body? Sure, he wasn't childish there, but JLU implied that he had been in the game a while when in Shazam he was just getting started. Yeah, JLU did that as well. I didn't, I didn't like that either. Um, I mean, the whole point of Captain Marvel or Shazam, as they call him now, is that he transforms not just his body but his mind as well. I mean, he has he has the wisdom of of Solomon. So if you have the wisdom of Solomon, you shouldn't have the judgment still of a 10 year old. Because the wis I mean, it'd be like if he transformed into Captain Marvel and he was still as weak as he was as a 10 year old, but he's not, he's as strong as Hercules. So, so the superpower, you know, supersedes his normal self. By the same token, his wisdom should supersede his sort of, you know, childish immaturity as a 10 year old or as a kid when he when he transforms. So it's never made sense to me why they would make Captain Marvel not just not just dumb, but actually dumber than he is as Billy Batson. I mean, in the Shazam movies, he was he was a lot smarter, a lot more clever as Billy Batson, he, he was outsmarting the police. He was he was like you know tricking the police every five seconds. He was he was outwitting bullies, and when he turned into Captain Marvel, he was all all of a sudden the dumbest guy in the room. It it made no sense. So yes, the Shazam movies didn't it didn't really impress me. Um, Wisdom of Solomon. So was Shazam going to have 300 concubines you know he only has the wisdom of solomon he, do, he doesn't have the libido of solomon so he probably would not <laughs> Thank, thankfully he does not have the morals of solomon he only has his wisdom but even even solomon wised up eventually he realized that uh you know, banging chicks every five minutes um, wasn't the wisest thing to do. All 
I saw Across the Spider-Verse this weekend, says Eric Hawkins. It was pretty cool. I love the animation in it. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably not going to go to the theater to watch it. Um, I, I just didn't like the whole premise of making, uh, what what's his face? Um, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man uh, 2029 or 2099, the villain. I don't like that. That, that. that like really turned me off of the of the sequel. I love the first one, but um, when I saw the trailer for the second one, I was just uh, nah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not playing that game. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna pull something like that, don't don't promote it. Don't promote it in the trailer. Um, because at least that way, if they had kept that a secret, at least I would have gone to the theater and watched the movie. They would have gotten my money. But by telling me outright that they're going to take one of the coolest spider men out there and turn him into a villain, I was, I was just like, no, I can't, I can't do it. Alpha Pro says they did that to Miguel. Dang, spoilers. <laughs> now I will wait until part three is released. Well, they spoiled it themselves. They 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 put that in their trailer. I mean, unless the trailer is completely misleading and and uh and Miguel O'Hara isn't the the bad guy in, in the movie. Um he's you know, they they're they're making him the bad guy. And, and I, I don't like that. Oh, I don't watch trailers? Okay. I always watch trailers. I mean, how, how else am I going to know what, you know, whether I want to watch a movie or not? <laughs> I, I need to watch the trailer to see if it's interesting. I got to watch the trailers. I got to watch them. Um, let's see. What am I doing here? Now, warning. In case some of you notice. And some of you probably will notice there are mistakes in this drawing and um do i care yes i do care but will that necessarily make me correct those mistakes no not necessarily because <laughs> it might be it might it probably end up being too much of a headache for me to do it um but i will leave it to you try to find the mistakes in this drawing And they're not too uh they're not too hard to find but i probably won't i probably won't fix them i'll just leave them in there so whoever buys this will uh can have 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 the enjoyment of, of trying to figure out where i screwed up <laughs> and if anyone's interested in buying it let me know. Send me a DM. I'll probably sell it for about, I don't know, 100 125 dollars when it's all inked up and stuff. Um, let's see. I guess got to figure out where these lines are supposed to go. I, rah, I drew these lines. Now I'm trying to figure out which ones. I want to keep and which ones I don't. I only have ten dollars in the bank. That's okay. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll be happy to take your life savings, Alpha Proto. Um, Jason makes mistakes. Can't be. Oh, can't be true. Yes, it is. I don't see any mistakes. Just a bunch of happy accidents. Yes, exactly. It's just happy accidents. There are no mistakes in the drawing. Only happy accidents. Oh, see, it's just a little tree right here. It's a little, a little happy accident. Yes, the, the trailer is misleading so far. So, okay. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, then maybe maybe I I was misled. It misled me enough to make me not want to watch the movie. So, hmm. Interesting. Well, at this point, I'll probably still wait for it to come out on on uh, on video. 
or streaming or whatever, whatever you want to call it. There are very few movies that I really feel compelled to uh, to rush the theater to watch nowadays. It's weird because I used to I, I, I blame COVID. COVID got me in a habit of not going to the movies and saving money. So <laughs> I feel bad because I really I really enjoy watching movies. But um, yeah. Another movie I, I definitely will I definitely will go to the theater to watch um, right now is uh, well there are a couple I'll definitely go watch the uh, the second part of Dune and um, and that that's not until I think November or so and I'm, I'm definitely going to watch uh, Mission Impossible um, the the new one that comes out I guess next month so. There are there are some movies that I will still plot my seat down in the theater to watch. Um Hey P Mike says, okay, I gotta get ready to get the kids get the kids. Hope to see you again soon, Jason. Yeah, me too. Um uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow during uh uh comics bear live stream everybody if you haven't already subscribed to the comics bear you should do so he has live streams every wednesday and saturday and they are a lot of fun um and he covers pop culture and uh stuff that's going on in the news so i encourage everybody to go check out the comics bear on youtube even though he never watches my live streams, I watch his. And I don't hold it against him, though. I'm not bitter. I'm just saying. He doesn't watch my live streams. Mm. Um, Eric Hawkins says, Miguel is more the keeper of the Spider-Verse timelines than ensures canon events happen. Okay, cool. Yeah, because when I was watching the trailer, I was like, well, Miguel is seems to be in the right, but they're portraying him as the bad guy because he wants to do the right thing. And and to me, I don't like that that trope in current, not just comic book movies and uh, um, sort of uh, plots, but just in pop culture in general, where someone doing the right thing is portrayed as, as the bad guy and the person who wants to break the rules or break the law that that could hurt a lot of people is portrayed as somehow the hero Let's see. Um, Ed Ninja says in Miguel's case, I think he he thinks he's doing the right thing. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Yeah, that's the that's the basic law of of sci-fi fiction <laughs> but it's also true it's like you, you can't sacrifice you know a, a hundred or a thousand people or a million people just because you want to save one particular person I mean that 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 is the epitome of selfishness or narcissism or whatever you want to call it you know you're 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 willing to sacrifice many people's lives just to save one life that you in particular, have a connection to. So. That's kind of why, why that's kind of what annoyed me about um what was that? Um The Last of Us. I don't know if you guys ever played that game or if you saw the I didn't I didn't watch the TV series. I had no interest in it. But I played the game. I loved the game. But then at the end, spoilers. 
<laughs> you know, this, uh, this girl that, um, the, uh, the protagonist spends the entire game protecting, you know, she, he, he spends the whole game protecting her to take her to a hospital where they, you know, because she has like a, inside of her body, her body has like some sort of cure for the zombie apocalypse and it'll save the whole world, the whole planet. They take, take her to the hospital and he finds out that the, um, in order to get the cure, they'll have to kill her. You know, the, the, they have, they have to mine a certain part of her brain and the process, the operation will, will kill her. They'll, they'll get a cure for the, for the zombie flu, but you know, this girl that he, he's been protecting will die. And so <laughs> instead of saving, instead of allowing the world to be saved and billions of people to be freed from this horror that has destroyed society, this guy decides, it's like, eh, you know what? I'd rather have this girl kept around instead. So he kills all the doctors and takes off all the girls. So that, that there's never, there can never be a cure for this zombie apocalypse that's destroyed you know the entire world and, and uh but hey apparently that, that's a heroic act because he, he he saved he saved this one girl at the expense of the the rest of humanity it's like uh thanks thanks buddy <laughs> it's still a good game but the uh and the uh the, I guess the logic of having this character who who has come to think of this woman, as, this girl as his daughter, it makes it makes sense from his perspective, but it's a uh, it's not the best message to be sending out. That one person is worth sacrificing the rest of humanity for. Um, and then she says, I don't think Miles is trying to be a narcissist. They were asking him to let his father get killed how many people will just stand by and let a loved one get killed well it depends if if again if the choice is is your one loved one one person versus millions of other people then yeah you, you probably have to let that one person go <laughs> you know <laughs> because you, you're concerned about that one person but everyone who dies because you save that one person also has people who love them and that's why I say it's narcissistic because he's only thinking about himself. He's only thinking about what he wants, you know, his his needs, his desires, and he, and he does not care about the consequences of 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 what will happen to the millions of people who will be hurt or killed because he's decided that this one person is more important to him than than anyone else because he doesn't know those people. That's where the narcissism and, and selfishness comes in. Yeah, just like Flashpoint. Barry, Barry had uh, what do you say? Had to learn. Had to learn his mother must die. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, th these guys are supposed to be heroes, then they should act heroically. And 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 the whole basis of superheroes is, is that they are self selflessly sacrificing to save other people's lives. So Miles refusing to do that to the point where he's risking i don't know how many i haven't watched the movie but i got the impression that that the timeline the multiverse is in danger you know if he doesn't let his dad die to me that's the most unheroic thing he could do and in fact it's, it's villainous because he knows that all these people will potentially die because based on his action and he doesn't care so that again that that's 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 the whole thing where they where you know Good is evil, and evil is now seen as good, because thirty years ago, Miles would be would be the bad guy. And I think he still is a bad guy. So that's just me. <laughs> Miles is a kid, though. He has to learn. No, he does not. No, but that, it, it, to me, it doesn't matter because he's not a he's not a kid anymore. He what? How old is he? He's like. 16, 17, 18, you know, he's the one who, who has chosen to take up this mantle of Spider-Man. So he has a responsibility. How old was, how old was Peter Parker when he became Spider-Man? 16. So, you know, the age doesn't matter. How, how old is Billy Batson? 10, 12? How old is Robin when he first became Robin? 
10, 11, 12. I mean, he had a choice, to, you know, whether or not to uh, to kill the, the guy who uh, killed his parents. He chose not to. So that's not that's not an excuse. Peter screwed up too and had to learn. Yeah, at the expense of, of people dying. So, and now you have thousands of Peters and thousands of other spider people who, who went through the same thing, telling Miles what will happen if he doesn't listen and he still doesn't listen. So again, that makes him the bad guy. You have, you have, you have countless people who've gone through the exact same thing Miles is going through, who know, who know where he's coming from. And he he still refuses to listen. So, again, to me that that doesn't make him a good guy. It doesn't make him misunderstood. It, it, I, I don't. It makes him the bad guy because he knows what's going to happen. He knows better, and he just refuses to do it. So, I have very I don't know. I have very little sympathy towards <laughs> towards when when they try to when they try to make bad behavior sympathetic. I. I I, 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 it's weird. I have sympathy when, when it, when they're, when they're straight up bad guys like Magneto, I have sympathy for them, but when they're, when they're supposed to be heroes and, and they still refuse to do what, what is pretty obviously the right thing. I stop having sympathy for them. I, I'm not saying Miles is right. I just get where he's coming from is all. Yeah, well, everyone does. Everyone gets where he's coming from, but there but there has to be a point when, despite that, you still have to hold the person accountable. I mean, I, I can get where someone's coming. I mean, Hannibal Lecter. I get where he's coming from because his his his, his sister was was uh, butchered and eaten by a bunch of soldiers back when they were kids. I get where he's coming from. I understand why he feels the way he does. But he's still a monster. He's still an evil jack ass who goes around murdering people and uh, you know <laughs> doing horrible things. So you, you, again, you, you can sympathize with a character, but still be willing to hold them accountable for for their bad behavior. And I, I, and, I, and, I and I cannot give my I, I haven't, again I haven't watched the movie, but I, just based on everything I'm hearing, I can't give Miles a pass. Um, because it's just uh I don't know. As a as a as a superhero, he should know better. But that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. I'm kinda I'm kinda I'm kinda I'm kinda harsh sometimes when it comes to my superheroes. I don't know. Her costume's supposed to, I don't know. I gotta. I gotta. Mm, I'm gonna keep on playing with this. On Smallville had to learn that too. Everything he saved someone or himself from death, someone else had to die instead. 
Oh, every time he saved someone or himself from death, someone else had to die instead. Well, maybe not every time, um, but um, but yeah, it's it's a, I mean, it's a it's a hard lesson, you know. Superheroes have to learn. I guess I me, mean, I guess that's a that's a trope too, but um, you know, in the first Spider Verse, you know, his uncle died, and that was that was I mean that was cool. I mean. I, I mean, I, I really thought that was well done, but um, I just uh, I know when, when millions of lives are on the line, I just I can't I can't I find hmm, I can't accept that that a superhero would think it's okay to sacrifice millions of lives just for one life that that he cares about. Um, so I don't know. Sorry, I'm still playing with these shadows. I, uh, I've never, I always struggle with working with these shadows on like black costumes. I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to copy John Byrne's uh, Fantastic Four drawings. You know, back, back when he, he's, I don't remember back in the 80s, John Byrne sort of swapped the the coloring on the Fantastic Four costumes instead of a light blue jumpsuit with a black collar and black gloves, he swapped them so they were like black costumes with white, with white gloves and a white collar. And so he would do like these really cool shadows on the on the black costumes for the Fantastic Four. And I remember trying to copy them and trying to emulate what he was doing, and I've never been able to. Ah, figure out how he decided what areas should be black and what areas should be sort of highlighted. I mean, I got a rough idea, you know, the parts that sort of recede are dark and the other parts, the parts that sort of stick out were highlighted. But when I do it, <laughs> it doesn't work out. <laughs> It's like, ah, oh, what parts is not, eh, not, 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 not doing what I wanted to do. Um, uh, Head Ninja says, uh, Eric Hawkins, that's the thing. It's easy to sit there and say he should do this or that, but sometimes he always have to learn the hard way in order to grow. I think where he's supposed to grow from, and this movie, he's been in the game for what, a year? He's been he's been in the game for more than a year. He's grown like two feet. <laughs> he's he's been in the game for for at least a couple of years or a few years. Um, I have troubles with black costumes too. Um, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's um, mm, I just need to keep keep practicing. <laughs> you never you never stop practicing with the uh, when you're drawing. You're always learning. Hopefully one day it'll it'll, it'll all make sense to me. I go, ah, that's it kind of makes sense now. <laughs> All right. This is pretty good. Let me hold it up so I can look at it from arm's length. Hmm. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I see things that can be improved, but that is, uh, that will always be the case. Maybe it would be easier blacking it all out and taking a razor pen to it for the highlights. No, I would definitely screw it up. <laughs> I could, I, I, yeah, I, um, I mean, I, oh, oh, you're talking about, um, in pencil. Yeah. I, 
again, I have a rough idea in my mind what I want it to look like. So I, I'm not completely, pardon the pun, in the dark about how I want the shadows to go. It's just laying them down. I have to constantly tweak what I what I've sort of visualized to get it pretty close to what I what I think I want it to look like, if that makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well, that's good enough, I think, for now. Um, let me work on her, her gloves. Have you guys been watching uh, that new Superman show, uh, Superman and Lois on the CW? It's very good. I was, um, I've been very pleasantly surprised by how interesting it is. Some of the characters are extremely annoying, like their kids. All the all the stuff with the kids is pretty annoying, but the fact the the, the um the meat of the of the show you know superman and his relationship with lois and all that stuff i find it very refreshing um i think the main characters even if they don't look look exactly like you know sort of like the ideal um superman and lois they they have their personalities nailed i mean it's just really i i have no problem like watching the show and just you know, believing the, the, that these these uh, characters are Superman and Lois Lane. Very well done. And the stuff they sort of put them through, I was like, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's like surprises me um, that, the, that DC would uh, like allow them to do the stuff they're doing with these characters. So and if you guys haven't watched it, you should check it out. It's on, uh, it's on today, actually. It's on a CW on Tuesdays. So whatever channel that's on for you. Um, I think it's on, it's on an eight, eight or nine. Can't remember, but it's, it's pretty darn good.
And Ninja says, I have not. I have not watched it. Well, check it out. You might like it. It's, it's the best CW show I've seen since Arrow. I would say that. Since Arrow, and I would say the first few seasons of Arrow, it's the best CW show that I've seen. And I've, and I've watched most of them. They've, most of them have been garbage. This one is not. It's, it's, it's pretty pretty darn good. Head interest says a remix of Spider Man. That's not co copyrighted, is it? Nope. Or at least YouTube doesn't recognize it as such. That's why I have it. <laughs> All right, let me see this. Arms length away. Looks pretty good. Almost done with the penciling. Thank you for your patience. Um. And then she says, sorry, I'm still being a hang of what I can and can't use on this platform. Everyone is because they're constantly changing it. So what you can show today may not be allowed tomorrow. So it's constantly getting revamped and switched on people. So don't worry about it. Um, I think generally, if you're able to find a remix that's switched up enough, that switches up the song enough, so that YouTube can't recognize it as the original song, then you're okay. Like with this, they've thrown in so much stuff in addition to the original Spider-Man song that it's uh, it sort of gets past their uh, their Shazam <laughs> software. <laughs>
Hey, Margo, how you doing? Good seeing you. Said I miss your drawing streams. Yeah, I sorry, I haven't been doing them that often. I need to do them more frequently. So, nothing else, just to keep the the channel sort of alive. I notice that if I don't live stream or don't put out videos on a regular basis, people are people start dropping off in terms of subscribers like flies. <laughs> so I need to, I need to keep, uh, keep putting out content. I'm not the, the most, uh, the most diligent when it comes to that. I'm not the most prolific YouTuber. But I do appreciate everybody who has stopped by to watch. Um, I've I've lost quite a number of people since <laughs> since the live stream started because I was babbling. But um, I do appreciate everybody who has stopped by and is hanging out and and watching and and hitting the like button and subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications of future videos. I appreciate all of you for taking some of your time out of your busy day to uh, to share it with me. So, I'm very gratified.
Um, hey, MK, how you doing? Good seeing you. MK says one thing that might help viewer numbers is show your version of Khan, not Marvel's. Marvel's is trash, and a lot of people just hate it outright. Thumb the thumbnail, I mean. Yeah, I know, but that's obviously their version. So I figured if they want to be curious to find out what my version looks like, to uh, watch the video because they may not like my version, and I and I want them to be curious enough to click the video to check out what my version might look like. That's that's my thought. That's my twisted logic. Um, Alpha Proto, Alpha Proto seems to have lost an A in the Alpha. Says, do do go to to the clubs in Florida and dance to the music you play on your streams. Oh no, I <laughs> I don't think they play this music in clubs. At least not not clubs down here. Uh, MK says, well, good luck either way. Yeah, thanks. I'm. I, I found it that I found that it's impossible to try to guess what will draw people to YouTube videos. Um, you can have the crummiest, dumbest um, thumbnail, and people will flock to to a video. You can have the best thumbnail in the world, and no one will watch it. So it's as far as I've seen over the past several years, it's just sort of like a roll of the dice, depending on what YouTube wants to promote. So. You know, I can't waste too much time worried about that, but, you know, let's see. gonna work I don't know I don't know if that's gonna work it's good enough <laughs> Margo says I've shared thank you very much Margo not that I know lots of people that's okay anything helps every little bit helps I don't know a lot of people either I still share <laughs> Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks that looks okay. It looks better than Marvel's version <laughs> of Kabbalah Khan. So I'm gonna start inking and then uh, hopefully I don't screw the whole thing up. So everybody say a quick prayer before I start inking. Please Lord don't let Jason screw this up. Um MK says, I bet Fortnite fan, fan art could be really popular too. Like if you do funny, cool scenes from the game. Yeah, they got so many characters though that I don't know. And I, and I play Fortnite a fair amount. I'm trying to think of any of the characters. I know they have that, and it, it, plus they keep on switching up the uh, the um, chapters. Now, now all the characters that were kind of cool in the last chapter are kind of gone so I don't know maybe maybe can you can you scan it before you ink oh yeah I probably should I probably should scan it before I ink I don't know you guys willing to wait for me to scan it Are you guys willing to hang out for a few minutes while I scan this or are you impatient for me to, to ink it right now um it'll probably take me about five minutes Mario says, I like the drawing streams better, but I will take the game ones too. <laughs> I like the game ones as long as I don't embarrass myself within the first two minutes, which I usually do. And I end up getting killed. So I need to get better. Mario says, I can wait. I will listen to your music. Okay, cool. You guys listen to the music. And uh, I will be back in a second while I scan this. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, for some reason my scanner is acting up, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take a picture with just my uh, cell phone, and then and then we'll go from there. I'll start aiming it because this is I can't waste a lot of time waiting for my finicky scanner to decide to not act up. So I'll take a quick picture of the pencils with my cell phone and then we'll proceed to ink it's murphy's law if something can go wrong it usually will so that is the case here let's see here get my cell phone Hopefully this will this will be a decent image. Let's see. Let's see what people on YouTube have been saying while I've been gone. What trouble they've been getting up to. All right. Um, oh, not much. All right. Let me take a picture of this and then we'll try to get back to the drawing. Let's see. All right. Now. Uh, I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting my cell phone in the, in the camera. There we go. Let's see. I guess it doesn't matter. Let's see here. Don't seem to be taking pictures. I'm hitting the button. Let's see. Okay, let's try again. Such a get in a hi fi set is best described as present. A feeling of life and nearness in the music. Why do you turn an island of the reproduction? See how that looks. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, I see. I see what I'm doing down. I'm doing wrong. Um, look at that. Let's see. It looks okay. That's good enough. It's good enough. All right. Cool. Let me see here. Um, sorry, I'm trying to reconsider certain things here. My cell phone is running out of power. I'm trying to figure out how to charge it and still be able to see the chat. Ugh. Got that. Now watch while I sing a We now know that Jiminy doesn't charge his phone. I charge it, it's just that it's, um, when, when I put the brightness all the way up so I can actually see the chat, it, um, it uses the power pretty quickly. And because uh, the chat's going, the, um, the, the brightness is going and YouTube is running. And so it's just, it just sucks up power pretty fast. 
We've tried that before, Jiminy. Charging and reading the chat. Yeah, I'm going to try it again and see if I can do it. <laughs> um, let's see. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I found a solution. I got some Christmas light extension cords. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Rube, Rube, I'm gonna Rube Goldberg this thing and uh, see if this works. Oh, it's working! Yay! Yay! Now I have a thousand cords in my studio that to avoid tripping over while I live stream, but at least my phone will be charging while I'm looking at the chat, so I will not run out of power. That's good. All right. Eagle 43 says, is laughing. Margo is also laughing. She's saying, yay, yay, yay. All right. All right for Christmas lights. Okay, here we go. See the see the chat, see people laughing at me while I draw. Okey doke. Nah, 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 nah. Get my chair, scoot it forward. Okay, there we go. Here's a fun part where I potentially destroy the entire drawing with my inking. Let's see. Got my pen. Let me see. Pen is pretty dead. Let's see this one. This pen is pretty good. All right. We're laughing with you, Jiminy. Thank you, Margo. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Do I have the right glasses on? I have the right glasses on. That's good. So I can see. Now the glass is clean. They're about, eh, they're about 75% clean. Let me, let me up that up to 90% uh, clean. That'd be better. I need all the help I can get, folks. Okay. Um, okay, let me start. Let me start inking. Wait, hold on. Let me take this off first. It's like peeling a band-aid off. This is the, the artwork that I was uh, tracing off of to transfer onto the paper. I'll keep this to the side just so I can continue to look at it for any... Anything I might want to focus on. Um, hmm, actually, I did notice one thing. I broke my glasses yesterday. Got an, I can't see. What does that say? Got an older pair on now. Oh, I, I still have glasses that I wore in middle school, Margo. I keep all my glasses. I don't know why, um, but I do. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't throw any of my glasses away. So I still have glasses from like 
you know, three or four decades ago. <laughs> Sorry, you broke your glasses, though. That is annoying. Because I need to, I need my glasses to see. So, for me to break my glasses, but I would be very, very frustrated by that. What am I doing? Oh, okay. It's like, why do I have another paper underneath it? It's like I shouldn't have that there. <laughs> Put that to the side. Pick this one up. All right. I see. Aha. Hello? All right. I see. better meta John Dillard's here. How you doing, John? John, you want to come in? I don't ask many people to come in while I draw, but John Dillard is an exception. And Eric Hawkins. Some people, Margo can come in too if you want. But um, yeah, it's good seeing you. Good seeing you, John Dillard. Hope you're doing well. I see John Dillard on various streams, and right now he has a he has a bunch of books that are out or he's working on. He has one called uh, the uh, what's it called the the buckler something something. 
the buckler hustle or something tussle tussle hustler bustle something put a link it to it in the description john <laughs> fair warning everybody john, what, if he puts in the one i think he is it, it, it's it's adults only so john Doe's a great artist but some of his books are <laughs> are not for children so i don't know if he's gonna put a link or not but john's working on a bunch of different books he's, he's a great artist so if you haven't already you should go subscribe to john diller diller draws on on youtube Canadian Tussle. Thank you, Margo. Margo knows a lot more than I do. Margo's up on uh, on what's cool uh, in the uh, in the comic book world. Yes, Canadian Tussle. You can buy it at um, fundmycomic.com if you're interested. Fund, like funding a comic book, fundmycomic.com. Problematic? Yes, yes, I, I would call John Dillard problematic. Yes, that, that's a good adjective for John Dillard in general. Okay, so far so good. I've not yet messed this up, but there's still a lot more to do, so stay tuned. I would say interesting and oops, hold on. Sorry. I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. Margaret says I would say interesting and charismatic, Dillard. Yes, he, he is interesting, charismatic, and problematic. All three. One does not one does not uh exclude the others, Margot. Alpha Pro says you don't use quills, nibs, and brushes to ink. I do use brushes. I don't use quills or nibs. Um, just because I worry about snagging on the paper and also sort of ink blobs dropping accidentally. And I, I just, I, 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 I want to avoid that. I've, I haven't used, um, quills or nibs in decades. It's just too many. And also I, I, I kind of hated the repetitiveness of having to constantly re-dip into the ink well and then you know to uh to ink i i just i don't i just don't want to be interrupted every five minutes having to do that so pens or uh brushes like these where the where the ink are are inside the uh inside the handle the reservoir that that's what i stick to it's just less physical hassle for me Not that I have anything. I'm not opposed to them. I mean, I think I think uh, I wish I wish I could use quills and, and nibs without having to worry about that, but I can't. Um, that's just a personal thing for me. I, I I tend to 
I tend to screw up whenever I use them. Screw up more than usual. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I screw up anyway, but. Ah, ah, ah. Alpha Bro says, just use protection. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's past five already. Two people haven't given up on me yet. They're still here. <laughs> Margo's one of them. She says, change me to the TV so I can see better. Okay, cool. Thanks, Margo. I appreciate the two people who are still here and have not run away from my drawing live stream yet. Yet. There's still time. Let me try some brush work. Alpha Pro says, I'm still here, El Guapo. El Guapo, I'm still here. Thank you very much, Alpha Proto.
Brush is good up to a point, then I start losing uh, losing control, manual control. Um, what is this? Okay. Thank you. 
then there was one. One person's left. It might be me. <laughs> I might be the one person watching myself. If so, welcome me. Thanks for watching my own live stream. You're welcome. I'm just here to see if you screw up. Cool. All right. Let's see. Hmm. How to bring back the pen? <laughs> That's a very short transition with the brush. Hey, Grantish Cosby here. How you doing? How you doing, Grant? It says, okay, I managed to catch one of your live streams. Cool. Glad you're here. Yes, you managed to catch it. I'm trying to trying not to screw up too badly. I'm drawing Kamala Khan, but an improved version of her, a better, more cooler Kamala Khan than the crappy one that Marvel has uh, given us over the past, was it? It's been almost a decade, I think, was it 2014 when they first, uh, first burdened Marvel Comics fans with Kamala Khan? So I figured it's time that, uh, time that she got an update. And now that Marvel has killed her off, now is the perfect time for Marvel to uh, to decide to redesign her for audiences that will actually buy her comic. Grant says, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing doing okay. Doing good. Does yours have a better power set than big hands? Well, yes. Here she's, as you can tell, this is uh this is Kamala Khan in about five years growing up. And here she's using her using her embiggening powers to their best use. She's embiggening the best parts of her of her body. Instead of her hands, she's embiggening other parts. So
traumatic sense. More than half of you failed. Most of those who passed got down by. Nobody had a nice percent. Let's see here.
All right. Carrie's here. How you doing? Carrie's here to cause trouble, I'm sure. She says, hey, Snitch, I shared your channel link in a couple of streams and, and told people to come check you out. Thank you. Also, hinted at Rex to have you on when he does his draw streams at 8.39 his time. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm not sure if I'll be available, but I appreciate it. Good seeing you, Carrie. Trying to try not to mess this up. I'm 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 partially succeeding in not messing this up. <laughs> not a hundred percent. Great. This is what you drew on previous stream. 
that you're inking now, right? Yes, yes, this is the same drawing. I, I finished the pencils and now I'm just inking it. It is a uh, Kamala Khan from Marvel Comics, um, Ms. Marvel. Grant asks, when you were penciling, did you have to keep jumping up and go pose in front of the mirror for reference? What will you do with the outfit? Um, well, I'll probably wear the outfit at, at local cons, so it won't go to complete waste. And uh, yeah, so there's that. But actually, I um, this is a this is an homage to the uh, original Ms. Marvel. Hold on one second. If I can grab these without everything falling. If you can see that, that's the original Ms. Marvel from 1979, where she debuted her her new costume. And so I I'm basically just taking this pose and redrawing it. This is done by Dave Cockrum, the guy who uh, who created the new X-Men, like Nightcrawler and Storm and Colossus, and um, is putting Kamala Khan into this costume. So it's not really my pose. It's Dave Cockrum's pose. So I'm just doing an homage to it. Greg Crosby says, oh, I've never seen that. Okay, cool. You should check it out. You should check out the original Ms. Marvel from the 1970s. It's a good, it's a good uh, comic book. It only lasted, uh, six, how many, 20 23 issues, I think. And then they were going to have a 24th issue starring Sabretooth, where she was going to fight Sabretooth. It never, it never got printed. In that, never got printed in that original series, but they printed it years later, back in the 90s, uh, in that anthology book I was talking about earlier called Marvel Superheroes. And I have it. I can find it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Is that it? That's not it. Here it is. They reprinted that last issue of Ms. Marvel that never actually got printed in her magazine. They reprinted it in this magazine. It's called Marvel Superheroes. It's from 19, 1992. So it took about 15 years for them to finally get it into print. <laughs> So 
Grant Cosby says, I remember the one with the white outfit and black symbol, I think. White outfit and black symbol. I don't remember that one. Did she have a costume like that? She had a she had a red costume, red and blue costume first. That sort of mimicked Captain Marvel. And then and then she had this outfit. And then she became another superhero called Binary, where she was sort of made of pure energy. And then she went back to this costume. I don't remember her having a white outfit with a uh, black out black symbol. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah, I think you're talking about Mary Marvel uh, from DC Comics. Yeah, she had a white outfit and, and a uh, she had a white outfit and a gold symbol, I think. And then she changed to an all black outfit with a gold symbol, but she became evil. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. It was a pretty cool costume. Oh, oh, I think okay. You're talking about Captain Marvel. Okay, I remember. Yeah, uh, the 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 um, second Captain Marvel from the 1980s. That was Monica uh, Rambeau, and she had a white outfit with a uh, with a black symbol. Yes. Yeah, that was a few years afterwards. I think Monica Rambeau was from like 1980. Two or 1983, I believe. And uh, yeah, she was she was the second Captain Marvel. She was a cool character. I never read any of the Marvel characters, so I don't know much about them. Yeah, there are a bunch of them. I mean, you have the DC Marvel characters, then you have the Marvel Comics Marvel characters. There are like dozens of them. It gets confusing. But then I mean, Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel. Yeah, exactly. There, there, there are 5,000 of them. 5,000 different Marvel characters, not just from Marvel Comics. So it gets very confusing. You have Hillbilly Marvel. You got Captain Marvel Jr. You got Mary Marvel. You got Uncle Dudley Marvel. You got Bunny Marvel.
Did you tweet out that you're streaming? That you're streaming? Where is everyone? I don't know. I tweeted it out. I tweeted it out to both my channels. So on both my uh, Twitter, you know, things, whatever, whatever. So I don't know. I don't know where they are, Carrie. Where are they? Where's my, uh, oh, here's my cell phone. I'm looking at it. <laughs> I'll tweet it out again. But uh, yeah, I usually don't get that many people watching me for whatever reason. It's like, I, I can go to Vic stream and Vic could be as fast asleep and I'll have like 20 people watching. I'll be drawing and no one will watch me. <laughs> but that's okay. That's all right. I'm going to be drawing this anyway, so I might as well stream it. So if no one watches me, that, that's that's okay. Let me see if I can get people to show up. Let me... Hold on. Let me... Let me tweet out the pencils and see if that gets people to show up. Hmm. Let me see here. All right, share. Tweet. Open Twitter. Okay, let me see if I can do this on stream. Whoops. I'll do it on stream so you guys can watch. Put that down there. Drawing Kamala. Oh, didn't didn't capitalize it. Boink. Capital K. Space. Capital K. H A N. Con. Dot dot dot. Live, not love, live. No, great, Scott. Come on, try again. L-I-V-E. Yay, it worked. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, ah, shoot. I need the blank. <laughs> I don't know the length of this dopey live stream. Anywho, let me enter that and then hashtag Kamala. Not Kamala Harris. No. Khan. Kamala Khan. Hashtag. Where's hashtag? Hashtag. Ms. Marvel space hashtag that dopey new movie she's in the Marvels. Make this Marvels. Marvels. There we go. Um, and I have no idea what the dang blasted link to this live stream is um i know let me check let me check hold on it's youtube youtube it's not, it's not all caps it. youtube dot com slash let me go check find out what it is don't go away Put this here, put that there, hold that. All right, I'll be right back. Rock.
about all plans. I thought we'd finish off the evening with a little dance. Dance? No, they don't pull that stuff out of us. What are you doing about it? You can't dance anyway. You can't, I Okay, I tweeted it out, but I, <laughs> as as uh, as per usual, um, I got the uh, YouTube link wrong because on the computer, capital I's and L's look the same, and I typed in the wrong letter. I think I was supposed to type in an I, and I typed in a lowercase L, a capital I. I typed in a lowercase l instead. So I tweeted it out. I found the correct link. I posted the correct link. And, you know, people show up cool, but they don't. That's fine too. Marsupial Gamer saw the tweet. He says, You tweeted and here I am. Good. Glad to hear it. So Twitter is working. It's most excellent. We got one marsupial gamer, so it was worth tweeting. So thank you, Carrie. I got one extra person watching me. Let 
Let's see. Okie doke. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Second link worked. Yes, I know. Because when I typed in the first link, I checked it. I was like, ah, I knew, I knew that was the wrong letter. But you never know until you actually try. So I had to hurry up and put in the, the right link. Now, my brain, my brain, my brain. I don't know what the point of that little heart in the chat is, Marsupial Gamer. It's annoying because I, because I can't read half of the uh, half of the comments. I have to move the I have to move the chat up and down just to read past that thing. It's annoying. I need to get rid of it. I blame YouTube. I did not ask for that little heart. Grant says, "Got to go do my daily exercise, but we'll leave the stream off for algorithmic purposes." Oh, thank you, Grant. I appreciate it. Your daily exercise could be typing in the chat. That is true, Carrie. That is very true. No idea what the heart is for if you press it. Yes, other emojis. Let me press it. Let me see what happens. Nothing else pops up. That Oh, no. Stuff does pop up. A smiley face. A little, a little popper. Well, the, what are those things called? Like it's called a celebration popper or whatever. A surprise face and a 100. I don't know what those are for. They're annoying. YouTube is trying to do everything everyone else does. I think it's a thing in Periscope, maybe, that they're trying to emulate. Well, they should stop because it's, it's annoying. <laughs> I find it very annoying and also... Uh, it's uh, distracting. Thank you. 
Hey, Pablo Romero, how you doing? Good seeing you. Kerry says, I see what it does. I press it and the emoji floats on the screen. Don't know if you see it as the person screaming when someone presses it. Don't know. If... Well, I can't. Uh, I'm not sure I understand what that means, but. Mark Super has to check his mail. Cool. Okay. Seems pointless if the YouTuber, if, if YouTube doesn't tell the streamer. Hmm, interesting. I want to see if you get the angry, she's underage comments for this drawing. I'm hoping to, uh, Pablo. I'm, I'm hoping to. So, uh, so far, nothing. <laughs> so far, no one's taken the bait. No one's taken the, she is underage bait yet. Even though Kamala Khan is at least 18 years old in the comics. But I am, I am hoping, I am looking forward to the uh, usual dopey comments. The comments that you often get, Pablo Romero, with your awesome art. I want some of those, some of those, uh, some of those crazy Pablo Romero comments on my drawings. Carrie says, please share the stream if you can, so chat's more lively. Yeah, right now, all I have is Carrie. Carrie talking to herself. <laughs> Carrie needs someone to, to make fun of and, and, and mock other than me in the chat. She needs some fresh meat. Um, Pablo Romero says, I had a good amount of those back in the day. Only Got only one last time. Only Got only one last time. Ugh, let me try to read this properly. Got only one last time I posted on facebook mm. i don't really I, I never get them on facebook i mean the only time i ever see them are uh are on twitter so i think f facebook is is uh I mean, facebook isn't isn't great but i think it's it's too civilized or more civilized than uh than twitter twitter is like the sewer of social media so you'll always get the craziest and, and most irrational comments there rather than on Facebook. I find.
I apologize that this is going slow for some of you guys. I wish I could do it faster, but I could, but not without messing it up. So, and I would like to not mess it up. Carrie says, just saw some of your art on your channel, Pablo. You're drawing a Velma. Wow. <laughs> uh, Carrie's just discovering the, the genius of Pablo Romero's art. The sheer beauty and thickness of Pablo Romero's drawings. Thank you. 
Hey, some person says uh, that her, her, her bosom could be bigger than her head. Are you saying I should make it bigger? You think I should make her bosom bigger? Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure, but we're saying there's a possibility that as it is right now, it could be bigger than her head. It could already be bigger than her head. I don't know which one you're saying, but I'm probably not going to increase the size any more than it is right now. I'll just uh, I'll leave it as is. I want it. I want. I want them big, but not just like. Well, it is a cartoon, but not cartoonishly big. Plausibly big, but still not as big as they are. In the comic, <laughs> so it looks like she's had an upgrade. You said that you're improving, so I am improving. This is this is an improvement over the way she's depicted in the comic book. In the comic book, she's basically flat-chested. So I am I am improving her that way. And she wait and she wears that dopey lame costume that looks like she's five. Well, not anymore. She's dead now. So. If they bring her back, they should bring her back in the uh, in the old Carol Danvers Ms. Marvel costume. This one. Paul Romero Art says, make them bigger. Paul Romero has very high standards when it comes to bosoms. So. Interesting. that one that one's pretty much dead put that to the side pick this one up try this Carrie says, Pablo, I think I found your Facebook page. A whole lot of news. <laughs> that's, that's probably Pablo Romero's page. If you found a Facebook page and there's a whole lot of nudity on it, there's a good chance that's Pablo Romero's page. There's a fairly decent chance you've landed on the right page. They say women are preoccupied with size, yet here you guys are saying, make the boobs bigger. Yes, yes. Let's see. Chasing high 
What the? Oh, dang, it's uh. It's almost 6.30. Huh, okay. Um, hmm. I'll draw for another half an hour or so before I take off. It's, uh, right now it's almost been three hours, so that's, uh, <laughs> I haven't gotten much done, but I'm, get, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um... Carrie says, I don't think I have seen you draw almost nude or revealing women before snitch. Um, I I have. I mean, I, I don't draw nude women. <laughs> I don't draw nudity. Um, at least for I mean, I I do for figure drawing class, but not not for this type of stuff. Um, but I, I mean all superheroes, heroines are almost nude i mean i mean she, she's wearing the same amount of clothing as wonder woman basically uh, so anytime you see me draw a woman you basically see me do this the only difference with this is that i'm obviously kind of accentuating certain parts i generally don't do that but um i found that these type of drawings tend to get more attention whenever i do do them so that's that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it also is sort of again making fun of Kamala Khan, who I can't kind of I kind of can't stand as a character. Like I said I think she's one of the worst characters Marvel's come up with in the last 30 years. Um, so it's sort of a jab at her, and also you know just just to get some get some views on on my YouTube channel and my drawings and stuff. So, but she's not naked. She's wearing clothing. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, some person said her personality has room for improvement. Yeah, a great deal. Uh, the, the, the boobs would help that, <laughs> says some person. Um, yeah, Paul Romero R says superhero suits are more like body painting, basically. By revealing, I mean women wearing some kind of bikini that barely covers her. Well, yeah, that's that's Wonder Woman. That's pretty much every female superhero. That's Ms. Marvel. Um, I mean, I, I'm also I'm also planning on drawing Kamala Khan wearing the original Ms. Marvel um, costume, which is even more revealing because she has this big old um, midriff opening around her stomach. So I was going to put her in that as well. So that'll be in the future. Stay tuned. <laughs> Um, Carrie says, which version of Wonder Woman is she barely covered? Her outfit is like a one-piece bathing suit. Right. And that's, she's barely covered. I mean, hold on. Do I have to look this up for you, Carrie? Hey, Scott. Hold on. Wonder, oops, spelled it wrong. Wonder woman wonder woman picks images images Well, 
Uh, see. Wonder, uh, Carrie says, I know what Wonder Woman wears, you plum. Then why are you asking? Here she is. If Wonder Woman was wearing even even less clothing than, than this character. You see that? That's Wonder Woman. Naked on the top, naked on the bottom. And, you know, she got this in the middle. At least this woman has boots all the way up to her thighs and gloves and her tops covered. You know, a little Wonder Woman. She's, she's half naked, half naked. Ah. Mess up my whole setup just to just to just to show that to Carrie. Dagnabbit. Carrie's causing trouble all, all over again. That's all part of her plan. I gotta find my original setup. Dead burn it. <laughs> so what you're saying, said Pablo Romero, is that we need a more revealing Wonder Woman? That's what it sounds like. That's what, I think that's what Carrie's Carrie's suggesting that Wonder Woman needs to wear less clothing one woman is too covered up Nope, 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 nope. That's not what I'm suggesting. That's what it sounds like, Carrie. Carrie's protesting too much. Sounds exactly what she's saying. She wants Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman to be buck naked. Buck naked. Wonder Woman. Carrie, Wonder Woman needs some modesty. I don't know why you want Wonder Woman completely naked, Carrie. It's very strange. You'll never get a movie made with her buck naked. Well, some movies, but not movies that you can show in theaters. So. Ah, uh, Pablo Romero says, too late. I'm already working on it. <laughs> awesome. Pablo Romero's on the job. Pablo Romero is working hard to give Carrie the Wonder Woman that she wants. A 
a buck naked one, one without the confines of clothing. One free from the constraints of the patriarchy. I don't know why some person's uh, things are all hidden, um, but some person says a fully nude Wonder Woman would show more strength, her, her bosom would end up knocking her out. Huh. I don't know about that, but I think she'd be immune to her own bosom, to the power of her own bosom. I think Wonder Woman would be immune to that. Like Cyclops is immune to his own optic blasts, I think Wonder Woman will be immune to the power of her own bosoms. Bosoms, 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 bosoms. Glasses are falling off my face. That's not good. I need them to see.
All right, just trying to figure out line thicknesses and the best way to get this stuff down. Squish into a pen, get more control over what I'm doing or trying to do. <laughs> Alright, 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 let's see. Make sure I'm not going to smear anything. I want to put my hand down. This would help. Sorry, I have to keep rotating to find the right angle to draw. Or rather, ink. Okay. 
Looks okay. That looks okay, that looks okay. Let me work on her bosom. See if I can do that without messing it up. Carrie's watching. I can't mess up her bosom. Carrie wants this drawing to be butt naked. I can't do that. I can't do buck naked for Carrie, but I can, I can at least make her bosom look fairly decent. Carrie says, oh, ha ha, enough now. More clothes, the better. That's not, what you, that's not what you were saying about 15 minutes ago. You're complaining to make her more like Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's even more naked than she is. More naked. More in the buff. More all natural. I never said less. <laughs> you just implied it. imply it either. No, I, I know you did. You strongly implied it. <laughs> I 
I see some white out in my future. Let's see. Head.
Less close, less close the better. Got it. See, Alfred Romero knows exactly what you mean, Carrie. So. Not showing Carrie's things either. Carrie says, "Enough now, please. I'm not into women." No one said you're into women. You're you're you're, you're jumping. You're making big jumps here. We're just saying that you that, that you that you want to see these uh, superhero drawings naked. I mean, you like women? Well, dress women fully clothed. <laughs> Carrie, we're just we're just going by what you're saying. We want to dress more like one woman, but one woman doesn't wear that many clothes. So, you know. Let's see. Hmm. Ship the glasses, crack the plates. That's what Bill Bobaggins hates. That's what Bill Bobaggins hates. So get rid, get rid with the plates. Blunt the knives and bend the forks. Smash the bottle, burn the corks. That's what Bill Bobaggins hates. So get rid, get rid with the plates. Are o'er the misty mountains cold To 
dungeons deep and caverns cold. We must away and break of day. <laughs> Paul Romero R says, I'm also not to women fully clothed. <laughs> <My Pablo. laughs> uh, funny. Oh man. of yore made mighty spells, while hammers fell like ringing bells, in places deep where dark things sleep, in hollow halls beneath the prairies. Goblets they carved there for themselves, and harps of gold for no man tells. There lay they long, many a song was sung unheard by man or elves. For ancient king and elvish lord, there are many a green golden horn, their shape and wrought and light they call, to hide in gems on the of soul. On silver necklaces they strung, the flowering stars, on crowns they hung, the dragon fire twisted wide, they met the light of the moon and sun. The pines were roaring on the height, the winds were moaning in the night, the fire was red, it flamed spread, the trees like torches blazed with light. The bells were ringing in the day, the men looked up with faces pale, the dragon's ire more fierce than fire, laid low their towers and houses frail. The mountains smoked beneath the moon. The dwarves, they heard the tramp of doom. They fled their hall to dying fall beneath his feet, beneath the moon. We must away their break of day. To win our hearts and go from here. Ah, uh, let's see. We'll leave you just to have a laugh. I asked twice for jokes to stop later. <laughs> Poor Carrie. Uh, but it is now 7 o'clock, so I'm going to end the stream for now. It is, uh, this is where it is at this point. It's getting there, but... Anking for me is always fairly slow because I worry about messing up. So it probably, you know, I'll probably have a few more streams, a couple more streams, you know, working on this before it's done. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell for notifications of future videos because I will be back to continue working on this and other art. And uh, please give this live stream a thumbs up if you would. I greatly appreciate it. And it definitely helps the YouTube algorithm to uh, promote my channel and my live streams. So any of those things are completely free to do. And uh, it would be a great help to, uh, to me and my channel. So if you would, please do so if you haven't done so already. And also, please share out the link. Uh, even though the stream is ending... Let people know that uh, that I was drawing, and they can check it out for themselves, and uh, they can enjoy it. You know, enjoy enjoy us teasing Carrie, and uh, Terry. Oh, sorry, Carrie teasing us back, and uh, yeah, all that good stuff. Uh, I'll probably be back tomorrow to continue working on this, if not earlier. I, mean, I might even be back later on tonight. You know, late. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, but. 
guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Appreciate your patience and your time and uh, just uh, supporting the channel by by watching it. Um, I am. I do. I do. Uh, I do greatly appreciate it. So, but guys, you guys take care. I'll talk to you later. Stay out of trouble. Watch out for Carrie and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.